Can you just take us through what you saw as Ethan crossed home plate there in the eighth, and there were some extracurriculars that kind of ensued there? What was the explanation you got, and how did you perceive that whole situation? Um, you know, I, I I didn't get really an explanation. All I was kind of trying to do was diffuse what was going on. Um, you know, you have uh, you have a field full of mostly alpha male type personalities. Um, you know, things are going to be said. Uh, I don't know who started it. Um, all I know is I try to advocate our guys to just shut up and play. Um, and sometimes that always doesn't happen. And I'm not real thrilled when our guys use their mouth and chirp. I'd rather them just go perform and play and let their actions do their talking. Um, that's something that I haven't done a good enough job at um, and need to do better, uh, making sure these guys just go play the game um, with their actions instead of, instead of chirping, if that were the case. Um, I'm not saying our guys started it. Um, I know their guys were doing some chirping too. So, But for me, I, I would rather just go play and let your actions do the, do the speaking. And that's, I've tried to preach that to these guys, but apparently I haven't done a good enough job. Uh, Coach, you've emphasized over the past couple weeks about you know, not walking matters, seven walks tonight. I know that was also commanded to some issues in the Olympic State Series. How do you go forward with, you know, with communication with Sam, Coach Peraza, and your pitching staff about limiting the walks moving forward? Well, to me, it's uh, a lot of it's just a mindset, you know, what you're going in with and, and attacking the strike zone. Um, these guys are capable of doing it. Uh, they're, they've done it before. Um, so for me, it's just it's something that you just got to have the mentality of attack the strike zone and, and not beat yourself. And again, it's something we continually talk about over and over. And, and from the offensive side of the ball, we continue to preach attacking fastballs and we continue to take fastballs. So. Um, like I said, it starts with me. I'm the head coach, and I'm not doing a good enough job coaching him, so I got to do better. Specifically with Tolik, um, well, small sample size the last couple outings, but has he been doing anything different mechanically that you've noticed that's kind of led to his little bit command issues, some, something he struggled with last year as well? Um, you know, the ball was coming out better uh, today than it was on Friday against Oregon State, but you know, command wasn't exactly uh, you know as stellar as, as he's been. So. Uh, for me, a lot of it's just um, mindset and, and going attacking because um, he's capable of doing it. We've seen it. He's he's got tremendous stuff, and it's just a matter of getting his mind right and going out and attacking. So um, you know, I've talked to Tully about that a little bit, and um, you know, there's going to be little bumps in the road along along the way through the season. So hopefully, this is just a minor speed bump for him, and he'll get back in the horse uh, hopefully this weekend. This season has been hard for you guys. How are you? Personally, emotional wise, <laughs> uh, it's a good question. Um, you know, I, I I don't like to lose. Um, it, it bothers me when we lose, and I don't really care what the expectations of other people are. I expect to win. I expect this program to win and be successful. Um, so I carry the losses very tough. Um, you know, but that's just something that. If losing becomes a norm, then I'll walk away. Um, I don't like to lose. And so for me, if, if that ever just becomes a stale thing that oh, we lost another game, then it's time for me to move on and do something else. Um, I hate losing. I don't like it. But I do point the finger straight at myself that I got to do a better job coaching these guys because there is enough talent in there to, to be good, in my opinion. I still think there is a chance for us to do something special. Um, but we got to get better. And it starts with me being able to coach these guys better. So. Um, to answer your question, I, I, I don't take it easy. I, I lose some sleep at night and get a little short with my wife and kids at times, which probably isn't fair, but I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning on the fly that, that I got to be able to control, um, leave the game here at, at times and, and not dwell on it so much. But, you know, for me, that's my job. I take my job seriously and I want to win. And, um, you know, all these games are close enough where we're in striking distance to where the little things that I'm not doing a good enough job coaching um, rear its head. So for me, that's um, something that myself and our coaching staff got to get better at. So hopefully we're having happy conversations instead of disappointed ones. Ethan and Will both just indicated a few minutes ago that they need, the team needs to take some ownership because they think that 
coaches have said everything they can say at this point. It's all about the players on the field. Do you do you agree with that? Do you think there's you've kind of emptied the clip on motivational speeches or laying into guys? Um, you know, it's not necessarily laying into guys. On occasion, that happens. Um, you know, tonight being one of those occasions. But uh, you know, from I just try to pour whatever knowledge I've gained over the years into them and what I know to be a successful player. Um, and a lot of it's upstairs and mental, um, being ready to play, being ready to to attack from the first pitch and not waiting for something to happen. Um, aggressive mindset. And again, I attack the strike zone and be ready for the fastball. Like I, I'm not trying to reinvent the game of baseball here. Um, I'm just trying to do what has been successful for the last 150 years in the game. If you get free bases, you're going to lose. If you're not ready offensively to, to hit pitches over the plate, you're going to lose. And you don't get in good hitters counts, you're going to lose. So um, for me, those, those are the things that, again, I, I got to do a better job fundamentally uh, preaching to these guys. And you know, I'm, I'm not going to stop coaching them. You know, for me, it, it's yes, I've said all I can say, but sometimes you got to say it more than once or in a different way uh, to get through to certain guys. So um, you know, for me, I, I I don't like having these, uh, I guess, like I said, disappointing meetings, I guess, if you will, after a game. But um, the bottom line is I'm, I'm tired of losing. Uh, I don't like losing, and especially in a matter of which games that we could win um, if we do a few more things and execute a few more things properly. So, um, but yeah, I think there is a, an accountability factor in all of us that we got to get better. Coach, you just mentioned you guys have been playing a lot of close games this year. You keep coming on the other side of them. Is there a similar pattern you're noticing for all these close games that you guys are coming kind of short in, or is it a different trend and different thing every time? Um, you know, I mean, you can certainly just, like I said, go back to the basics and look at. I mean, if you're if you're a numbers guy, you can you can look at the numbers. Um, we punched out 11 times; they punched out three times. We walked seven hitters; they walked. Uh, two hitters. You know, we gave up free bases. They didn't. They had, they were ready to hit. And we weren't. You know, from a, a general standpoint. So, um, again, to me, that's a mind. A lot of it's a mindset. Um, you know, the ultimate result is some physical mistakes. But I believe that you got to lock in mentally and and put yourself mindset in a in a position to to be aggressive on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. So. Um, you know, it kind of always seems to revert back to the same same things when we come up a little bit short. What's the plan for the weekend rotation? Is uh, Luckham going to move up to Friday? Is everybody going to move up? And Tulloch is, is he still going to try and start maybe this weekend for Washington? Um, I mean, he threw 33 pitches. He shouldn't have any problem bouncing back and being ready for Sunday. Um, but you know, we'll reevaluate that and, and see how he how he bounces back. Um, but yeah, the start the plan would be to. At least go with with luck on Friday and and Tyler on uh, Saturday, and then see see how Tully bounces back after today. Um, so I mean, yeah, I, I mean, that's just uh, yeah. To answer your question, that's probably what we'll do. Yeah, and how about Hunter's uh, progression just from his injury? I mean, he's probably still um, any update on his his status. Um, you know, Hunter can can do everything right now except throw. Um, so his legs feel great. Um, he's swinging the bat and he's taking some live ABs, um, batting practice. All that stuff feels good. So um, I don't, I don't have any hesitation of using him in the DH role or pinch hitting him if I need to, um, or pinch running him. Obviously, the defensive part kind of limits me a little bit of where I can use him. But um, you know, I think he's. He's eager to want to play and want to help out, so it's just kind of a matter of finding the right situation to get him in. And like I said, if I decide to DH him, then finding the right matchup for him to where he hasn't seen a live really at bat in, in a month or so. So trying to put him in a situation where he can be successful. You talked about the mental game, um, tough series against Oregon State, and then tonight. How do you prepare that mental game coming into a conference play like Washington? You know, for me, it's everybody individually has got to got to look in the mirror and get ready to play. Um, and it, it, again, it's not. I don't mind physical mistakes; they're going to happen. Errors happen, walks happen, strikeouts happen. But if you're not going to make any adjustments, then uh, well, based on the information we've given and kind of try to try to teach upon, and it's it's. Uh, 
we're not, like I said, then we're not doing a good enough job getting through to them. And so that falls back on me and our coaching staff. So, uh, but mentally, um, I'm hoping these guys lock it in a little bit more and, and focus from the first pitch uh, a little bit better and are ready to play um, right out of the gate. So I, I know, you know, we can't, uh, we can't continue to drop games. Um, a, I, for the psyche, I don't like it. Um, for my sanity, I, I don't like it. Hopefully for theirs too. Um, but more importantly, you know, if we want things to, to happen the way we want to this year, we gotta, we gotta start winning games. So that's all there is to it. Um, I don't think there's a, a lack of mental toughness because um, there's certainly a lot of guys in there that are that are mentally tough that, that I'd like on my side in a street fight. So I mean I think they're they're uh, they are mentally tough. It's just a matter of focusing in and locking in in, in certain situations and executing and trusting their abilities and trusting the preparation and, and being able to make adjustments. So um, you know the mentally tough part. Um, you know, there's plenty of there's plenty of it in there. Um, we just need to, to channel it in a way that, that focuses in more from the first pitch and and ready to play. So, um, that, and that, in my mind, that's what needs to happen. Do you feel like you're learning something new about yourself as a, as a coach with every single game that is played? Um, I'm learning something new every day. Yeah, um, and it, it's uh, it is a roller coaster, um, obviously. Um, like I said, I, I take the losses a lot harder than I enjoy the wins, um, which, uh, you know, I mean, it was emotionally great when on the, the Sunday at, at Oregon State, you know, after we've been pretty much dormant the whole weekend to come back and sneak one on Sunday. Um, it was a great feeling. And for me, it was more great to see those guys feel good, you know, about something. And, and for me, it, it's they're capable of doing some great things. And when you, keep grinding and keep battling and something breaks through like that game on Sunday, it's, it's a good feeling that, yeah, we played pretty poorly up until that ninth inning on Sunday. And guess what? We beat the number three team in the country at their place. And there's something to be said for not giving in and, and quitting. Um, so back to the point about mental toughness, these guys, they didn't give in. So I don't anticipate these guys ever quitting. Um, that's something that they're they're just not in their DNA. They're not going to quit and give in. So to me, that's mental toughness. It's just a matter of locking it in a little bit better. Um, and yeah, I find out stuff about myself every day, and um, you know, controlling my emotions at times, and and like I said, on ways that I got to coach and teach these guys to get better. What's tonight's lesson up after tonight? Uh, tonight was one of of expression. I'll just leave it at that. So. Um, you know that that they needed in my mind to hear it that you know uh, it's a lot of it's the same song and dance and I'm tired of saying the same song and dance you know we've got to make some adjustments at some point in time and if that if I'm not doing something and communicating something properly by all means I need to know about it and I told them my door is open so if there's something that we're not doing as a coaching staff that's not meeting your needs let me know I'm open to getting better uh, myself so uh, from that standpoint, I'm, um, I'll be the first one to look in the mirror and say, I got to get better.